Okay, guys, I wanted to review with you how I set up um, or how I use the 6.5 guys uh, load development spreadsheet. So let me delete, oops, delete some of this stuff. So the first thing is to go out on the range and start shooting and get some information about your uh, load velocities. So what I'll do is in my spreadsheet, in the load development spreadsheet, I'll have different loads here. They say this is 74.1. And I'll have the different loads I want to work up. And I'll just, I'll fill these out um, and take those loads out to the range to start shooting. These are just example uh, grains. So this this area here for the you know the load number would be the load that you're shooting in grains. So then this is uh, a shot series that I have from my magneto speed uh, velocity meter. Uh, the way I have this set up is that I have, I, I, I load five, lo five rounds of a single load. So all of these will be, my first shot series will be 75 or 74.1 grains. So in a way you can think about it, these are all 74.1 grains. And the second shot series would be 74.3 grains or whatever it is, whatever my next series would be. So after I get that shot series back, after I have done all the shooting, I record the shot series and then I can copy that into my, uh, my graph here, into my load development graph. So I'll just do that now. And then this graph will auto populate below here. So right now the scale uh, is between zero and 3000. And once we get that narrowed down, this uh, polyline will look a little more normal and the range will be, the range will show up so we can see a difference between our shot pattern and this extreme spread will mean a little bit more. Ext extreme spread, standard deviation, mean, median. I, um, really there's not too much of a, a value here that really all I'm looking for is the lowest extreme spread. So I'll just copy these over and I'll just paste values here. So I'll just do that for all of the loads I have. Well, it'll give you a mean for the shot series. It'll give you an, ex an extreme spread, but really, it's e it's easier, much easier to look at this on a spreadsheet to see where your velocity plateaus are. Here, I, I can already tell I'm going to see a velocity plateau here. You know, if we have uh, extreme spreads in the single digits, that's already in a, that's going to raise a red flag in my head and say, "Hey, this is right where I want to look." Seventy six point one with an extreme spread of six, a standard deviation of two. You know, these are really just a statistical means of saying that this is where you want to be. Extreme spread, in my opinion, is the most important statistic in your load development. I don't know why that got removed here. I'll just put that up there. Uh, let's see here. So here, you can see that my y-axis has changed and has 
you can see the x-axis has changed as well to show that these are, you know, this is probably 74.1. This is probably like 74.3, I would think. Yeah, there we go. Um, and what you're looking for is just the lowest distance here, and you can manipulate these boxes, these error boxes, to fit those. And these error boxes are basically showing you the greatest exp extreme spread for each of your loads. So these little gray dots represent one shot, two shot, three shot, four shot, and what they're measuring on the y-axis here is their change in velocity. So shot one would be represented here, shot two re represented here, shot three, shot four, shot five, and the goal here, or at least my goal in developing this would be to say, I want the lowest extreme spread. And that for me is here at 76.1, which would have the smallest error bar, the smallest change in velocity in this Y direction here. And is that a reasonable uh, velocity plateau? So I can see the velocity is changing here. What I want is a relatively small change in velocity as I change in powder weight. So if my scale isn't reading correctly one time, I may have a small change here, a small change here, and that velocity plateau means that I won't, I'll have a very small change in velocity when I have a change in grain weight, an accidental change in grain weight. So I'll just continue to, to put these out. This really isn't necessary. This is just a good visual indicator of your error. If there are any other areas where this makes sense, you know, you can find those as well. Um, this for me is, is, is a helpful spot. I know in the rest of the load here in the rest of, in the rest of the load development, there are other small changes in standard deviation. I would look for those as well. Um, and then to add those on, maybe I can just show that part here. If you know, if you need to manipulate this spreadsheet to add more, let's say you have, like in this case, I have more loads to develop or more loads that were shot, I can just go through and add these here. I'll delete these numbers. Let's see, that was 10, I think. And I'll go through and I'll show you how to manipulate the graph to where that is. So I'll change the graph data and I'll allow that to bring these loads in as well. So right now, the graph is kind of screwed up here because we, don't, we have zero values in here. Let me add those in. Let's see, 26. And there we go, there's our graph back to a normal place again. We can see we have another velocity plateau here. It just gets a little harder to see where your velocity plateaus are. I mean, it's it's easier to say there's one here and there's one here. And again, you just have to change your error bars to match around these uh, shot strings here. So you can take this out as much as you'd like. I recommend staying around 10 to 15 to where you can easily identify velocity plateaus. Not that, that it's that hard. Obviously, if you have uh, extreme spread in the single digits, that's the first place to look.